Easter began marked by uncertainty. Hope seemed to die when Jesus was crucified. It seemed evil had won. But three days later, Jesus rose from the dead. The tomb was empty. He is risen. He is risen indeed. His promises reign true. Through Christ, we are made new. Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to City Church. Super glad that you are here today. Uh, we are getting ready to finish our main new series. This is the last week for our Easter series, and we start a brand new series next week called Water. So it's Water Stories from the Bible. Really excited about that. It's main new. Today's sermon title is Putting Your Faith in Action. So we talked about the resurrection, we talked about how it has the power to change our lives, but it doesn't mean anything unless we actually move on that. Jesus told us to go, not to stay. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me pray and we'll get started. God, thank you so much for this opportunity to be in your house of worship this morning. God, we thank you for our, our worship night that we had last night that's leading right us right into today. So we pray um, today that you would send your Holy Spirit upon us. Uh, your scripture says we're two or more gathered. Uh, you're in the midst of them, God. So thank you for being here today. Uh, comfort us, give us strength and courage, and help us to be transformed from the inside out. For we hear today from your word, wouldn't just stay uh, in our brains, but it move our feet and our hands to action. God, we love you. We pray this in your name. Amen. We got a lot of announcements. Uh, John's got four minutes to the ministry spotlight. We're going to start playing the music really loud after 4.01. Uh, so he's got a lot to say. We got three big announcements. Watch the video, and then we'll start our worship. Hey, everyone. It's Austin Shane from the City Church Media Team here to share our big three announcements of the week. First up, today, right after church, we are having a volunteer appreciation lunch and training event. This is open to any current volunteers and anyone who's interested in serving here at City Church. No need to sign up, just stick around. Next, save the date for Saturday morning, May 4th, as this will be our next revitalization workday over in the main church building. No experience needed, just a willingness to work. Let us know you are coming by signing up back at the Yes table. And finally, are you ready to share? If anyone is interested in going to Africa this winter on our first international missions trip to help our ministry partner school in Eswatini, let Pastor John know soon. Okay, that's it for this week. Thanks for choosing to connect, grow, and share with us here at City Church Greenfield. Now, let's get ready to worship. Peace your kingdom's power. Your 
Praise be to God. Let us hear now the word of the Lord from 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 58. It says this, Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. I know. Come in the afternoon. I'm sure that uh, there will be some of us here till uh, at least mid afternoon if you want to come and uh, share in in uh, that experience. We have a ball game. We were trying to miss it. Yeah, I know you were trying to miss it. Yeah, so they got a ball game that morning. He planned it just right so that they don't know. Um, but uh, 
hopefully you'll you'll come bring some work clothes, bring some gloves, and um, we'll try to fill up a dumpster with a lot of stuff and uh, get ready for the next things we need to do. Um, if you are not connected in a connect group, man, we encourage you to do that, okay? Uh, we're, we're getting about the halfway point through this uh, next semester. It's going very fast. and uh, But, you know, get plugged in and, and get in a group and uh, allow the Lord to uh, bless you through other people uh, and not just on Sunday morning. So... Now, with uh, offering and things, my wife my wife takes care of the books at this time for our church and stuff. And uh, one of the things she says, I need to say, okay? If you're giving online um, and you are giving towards two things, maybe you're giving your tithes and offerings, but you're also giving to missions, you need to separate those, okay? So give to your tithes and offerings or to uh, another thing that you're giving and then to, to missions. So, uh, because some are maybe giving one thing and say, well, I meant so much of that to go to missions. Well, she doesn't know that, okay? And uh, so um, if you don't split it up, it's gonna, whatever you put it in, that's where it's gonna go, okay? So split it up um, and, and you go, well, that means I have to do two entries. Yep, um, okay, um, another 10 seconds. <laughs> And um, just don't do it in between, you know, like commercials in between your favorite show, okay? Um, so anyway, uh, I think that will help her and uh, to know exactly where everything goes, okay? Um, yeah, Pastor Jason mentioned about the missions trip. If you're interested in the missions trip, I won't give you any details right now. It will be in November. But, um, and we have dates and we have cost and all of that. We have what we're going to be doing and all that. But if you're interested in that trip, um, you see me. We're going to then uh, set a date for all the ones that are interested to um, come and get all of the information, okay? So, um, but I'd like to gauge if there is interest, okay, in that. And um, so uh, do that. Soon, we'll probably in May sometime, we'll have a, a, a time where we'll get together and um, give all that information. So here's how you can give, and we encourage you to give uh, faithfully, regularly, and we thank you for your generosity. We thank you for your obedience to the Lord as he had instructs you, and um, we just pray God's blessing upon you as you uh, bless him and his kingdom. And as we've said here many times, you're not giving to this church. You're giving through this church. And uh, that we can bless others and we can uh, expand his kingdom. So let us pray. Father, we thank you now for uh, this opportunity to hear from your word. We ask that you would open our eyes and ears to the truth. That you would move us as Pastor Jason is going to be preaching into action. That we will put feet to uh, what we believe, that we will uh, move uh, where you move us, that we will be uh, obedient to what you are asking us to do. And Lord, we just ask that you would bless him now as he brings us uh, the word. And we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. series super excited really quick in case you missed it or you're watching online tonight which by the way if you have friends share our website share our our website now can have the messages and all of a sudden we get a nice upgrade to our website so you can view all the well most of the past messages but at least the current messages 
on there. Share that at citychurchgreenfield.com. Tell your friends. If you're watching tonight and you haven't seen any of them before, you don't want to look at the other ones, let me catch everybody up really quick. Week one, we said you have to stop looking in the rear view mirror. That on a car, the windshield is bigger on purpose because we're supposed to be looking forward. But many of us look over our shoulder about the regrets that we've made in the past, and it stops us from moving forward in the direction that God wants us to do. Um, week two was Easter. We said because of the power of the resurrection, the same power that, that raised Jesus from the dead is available to us to be made new. Despite our past, despite what we're doing wrong, God can make us clean and make us new for what His Son, Jesus Christ, did on the cross and when God raised Him from the dead. We said all you have to do to enter into a relationship with God and to be a part of God's family is to, what it says in Romans 9.10, to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, then you are saved. And that's it. That's it. You start there and that's how you get entrance into heaven. We talked about the thieves on the cross, and there was no time for the one thief was ridiculing Jesus. The other one said, remember me when you go into your kingdom. And Jesus told him, get down off the cross. We're going to have a Bible study. We'll get you baptized. We'll go through the journey classes at City Church Greenfield. Uh, no, right? He said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Now, all those things are important. Getting baptized, going through our um, discipleship training is, is, is good. It helps us keep going the right way. It's just not the only way. But right then and there, Jesus said, if you, you know, you can go with me into heaven. And because of that promise, we know that when this life is over, that it's not over, right? It's just the beginning into eternal uh, heaven with our Heavenly Father, which is amazing. So when we have really bad news, or we get a bad diagnosis from the doctor, we might lose a loved one, that we can still have joy, and we can have peace, and know that it's not going to be for nothing. That if they know Christ, we're going to see them again. We're going to have new bodies, and it's going to be great rejoicing. There's going to be no tears, um, no pain, no suffering in heaven. So we get to be looking forward to that, which is amazing. Another bonus is we get to be part of God's family, which was week three. Once you accept Christ, you are now adopted into um, the family of God. And we have brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're meant to be made new to journey together. That we're not, we're, God is, exists in community. We are supposed to be in community. We're not supposed to share, uh, we're not supposed to live this life by ourselves. We're supposed to share our struggles. So no matter what kind of family unit you're from, from single all the way to uh, married with lots of kids, there's an opportunity for you to do more and to connect more and have real, authentic Christian community when you are part of a local church. We said that local church um, is God's plan A for the world and there's no plan B. Jesus came and he sent his disciples and told them to go the local church is plan A. There's nothing better to work on and to serve on than to be a part of, the, of God's family. Today, we put feet to that. Hands and feet. And it is, there's the big idea. If you, if you are made new, if you're a part of God's family, if you've been adopted by the Heavenly Father, then act like it. I could have called it, you know, tell your face. You know, if you have Jesus in your life, in your soul, tell your face. You should look like you have something different in your life. Because you do. Not only do we have salvation in heaven, but we get peace. The scripture says we have, can grab peace that surpasses understanding. That's amazing when we have so many worries and stressors going on in our world. If you're really made new in Christ, you have put your faith, your trust in Jesus, it's time to act like it. Now it's going to look different for every single person. All we're saying is we, we want you to take this journey with us. Whatever step you're on or whatever you need to do, just take the next step towards Jesus. You say, well, yeah, I did, but then I took two steps back. I really messed up. It's okay. Dust yourself off. Repent means to turn away from that lifestyle and turn back towards God. And you can do that today before you leave today. You can pause the video and do that. You can do that in the shower tonight. Whatever. You can, it doesn't matter. Whenever you can say, all right, I'm done with this. I'm, trying to, I'm tired of trying to live in life by myself for my own reasons, and now I'm going to turn towards God. I want to be made new, and now we have to act like it. When we were, I used to be very squeamish. I'm still a little squeamish, if you ask my family, but I used to be like, you talk about blood, and I'm driving, it's dangerous. Uh, my mom was talking about some kind of dental procedure, and she's the same way. I'm like, what? I'm driving. Why are you telling me about you bleeding in your dental? I'm, I'm like, I'm getting, i got to pull over I used to be very, very squeamish until I survived a horror movie called Childbirth. <laughs> it was very difficult for me. 
Brooke was okay. I was a mess. Uh, and it, they don't they don't tell you. I mean, dads if you or young married guys, if you haven't had kids yet, I mean, it is it is something to behold. Uh, it's done, and you look over, and you're like, half of your wife is laying on the table with all the stuff they pull out of her. Uh, I'm saying it's like I'm like. What in the world? I was freaking out. And, I, and my mother-in-law, Shanda, was there. And she's a nurse. Thank God she was there. Uh, I would have been on the floor. And they've been like, get him off the floor. Get him out of here. I was so... But we had the best OBGYN. In fact, she was our second. We we had one that, like, she scared us. She was, like, barking orders at us. Like, you got to take vitamins. And you got... And we were like, uh, can we have another doctor, please? Uh, and we actually did. It was really awkward because it was in the same office. So we saw the other doctor. We got to have to put our, uh, our head down. And we got Dr. Isdith, finally. Uh, and we, man, we loved. She made us feel comfortable. She made us, she was very trustworthy. Um, she was very, to answer all our questions. We had so many questions. We were, if you're ever a, a new parent, you know that you just have tons of questions. We had no idea what was going on. Landon, you, we couldn't hear his heartbeat because the something, something, some part of her guts were in the way. Some placenta. Uh, we couldn't get a heartbeat by, you know, like a stethoscope. And we tried things and we couldn't hear him, couldn't feel him kick and all this stuff. And so we're constantly going to the doctor in the hospital and she's like, calm down. You're going to be fine. He's great. He's good. You know, it's going to be really good. Uh, and so we, we're going to, the, the baby's coming, right? The baby's, we're in the hospital. I have a picture. Um, that's, this is before, obviously, it all went down. Um, still love each other at this point. Uh, everything was great. I, look, I had hair uh, before. I only had one chin. Like, it was pretty cool. Uh, life was great. And this is only a few hours before um, the Landon was coming. And Landon, we knew that Landon had an uh, umbilical cord wrapped around his neck. It was part of his thing. It wasn't. It wasn't blocking his air, but it could if something went wrong during during labor. Of course, that's that's all we could think about was something was going to go wrong during during labor. And it got to the point where the it was like nothing all night long. We stayed all night. Um, Shannon was there all night, and all of a sudden, boom, baby, it was on. And they called the doctor, and she wasn't able to get there right really quickly. Uh, and we're all freaking out. Uh, I'm, I'm like trying to like, I'm right. This is it. This is it. This is it. I'm gonna die. Uh, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna be just fine. Everything's gonna be great. You're gonna be great. I'm gonna die. You're gonna be great. Uh, and she, we had decided we're not gonna do any medicine. No needle in your back. No epidural. Natural childbirth. And I'm like, okay, sounds good. Whatever you want, dear. Um, and then it hit, and she's like, I need the medicine. I need it right now. Get it right now. Get it right this second. And the uh, the nurse says the anesthesiologist is is too far away. There's not time. Doctor Davis will be here in five minutes. Brooke, if you guys know Brooke, is very sweet. She's very mild mannered. Um, she's very quiet. She, in my mother-in-law is here. You can ask her. This is a true story. She grabs me by the throat <laughs> and she says, "You get him here now, you freak!" <laughs> I was like. Have you ever seen Star Wars when Darth Vader's choking out somebody? That I know what that feels like. Uh, and I was like, okay, 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 okay. Uh, and and then there was no time. Doctor Isis came in and she looked at Brooke right in the face and she goes, "Do you trust me?" And Brooke's like, "Yeah." She goes, "Okay, let's 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 push. It's time." She goes, "Dude, grab a leg, mom, grab a leg." And I'm like, "What?" And I'm like, "Oh, oh my." You know, I thought it was going to be like kind of the back taking pictures, you know, of her face. And now here I am, like in the midst of going, oh my, that's my wife. Oh, and I was, oh my goodness, it was horrifying, but it was amazing. Obviously, ended up well. You guys know, Landon made it out okay. The baby came out, uh, the things wrapped around his neck. Dr. Isith went, boom, and threw it on Brooke's um, chest, and there he was. And it was amazing. We were all crying. Uh, it was a great time. There was a moment where Brooke was like, I can't do this. I can't, I can't. I just, it's, the pain is too much. I can't do it. And, you know, we know it's going to happen no matter whether she wants it or not. But Dr. Isdid looked at her in the face and said, do you trust me? And all that prep work and all those conversations that she had, all that thing is in Brooke. She, you know, the, she was breaking my hand, too. She was breaking so hard. And she just kind of, she didn't, you know, let go. But it was not, you know, I wasn't going to have permanent injury. She kind of let go. Her face kind of, she did the head nod like at a ball game. You know, she was like... Okay, I can do this. She could have believed that Dr. Isleth was going to help be able to coach her and deliver her and do the right thing. But until she went, okay, she put her trust, she put her faith in the doctor that everything was going to be okay. And when she did, she kind of relaxed and everything happened naturally. True faith requires action. When we're in the midst of it and the struggles and the pain of life are hitting us from all over the place, 
True faith comes with action. We can't just say we're going to trust in God. We have to actually trust in God. We can't just say, oh, everything's going to be fine. We have to believe it and move accordingly. There's a great story in the, a true story in the book of Luke. We're going to be in Luke chapter 7. We're going to break it up in three quick sections uh, about a Roman centurion. I don't know if you guys know a lot about the Romans, but they were the, the government. They were occupying the land at the time of Jesus. And many people thought Jesus was going to come in and kind of overthrow the Romans and then bring in this big Jewish empire or whatever. They thought he was going to be this conquering king and they couldn't grasp that he was coming to save us from ourselves and from our sins. Have an entirely different kingdom. But the Romans were in charge and Jesus is heading there. So in verse 1, chapter 7, verse 1, when Jesus had finished saying all these things to the people, he was, he was teaching them, he returned to a town called Capernaum. At that time... There was a highly valued slave of a Roman officer who was sick and near death. When the officer heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. So they earnestly begged Jesus to help the man. If anyone deserves your help, he does, they said, it's him. For he loves the Jewish people, and he even built a synagogue for us. So Jesus went with them. But just before they arrived at the house, the officer sent some friends to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home, for I'm not worthy of such an honor. So here's a Roman officer, a leader of men, of soldiers, of other soldiers, who, told, who, who had heard stories about Jesus healing, told him, don't even come into my house, I'm not worthy. Okay, don't even come here, I'm not, I'm not worthy for you to do that. He had heard about Jesus and all that he was doing. Jesus was getting very popular. He was healing people. People had heard stories of Jesus. And this Roman, non-Jewish, okay, non-Jewish, non-children non of God person, this occupier, heard and believed that Jesus could heal his servant. And so he sends these other Jewish leaders to go talk to Jesus and say, don't even come into my house. You don't need to. I'm not worthy. Just like him, we need to recognize that Jesus is our only hope for healing. And it, yes, it could be physical, but also emotional, mental, spiritual, whatever you're struggling with right now. You're probably trying to fix a lot of things on your own. But if you are a believer, you have put your faith in Christ, you now are a member of God's family, you're adopted by God, now we have to act like it. We have to actually put our faith, if we're going to be healed from anything, it's going to start with Jesus. Now, he wants us to do our part, right? He's not supposed to, we're not supposed to just kind of sit around and say, God, take care of me. He wants us to do our part, but our part is so insignificant. It's important. Like, we have to do it, but in God's eyes, you know, we have to lean on him, to put our trust and faith in him, not us trying to fix it. And when we do this, God can make us new every day. And it's a daily thing. Sometimes it's hour by hour. Choosing to say no to some things and yes to other things. Saying yes to what God wants us to do. And trusting on Him for every single thing instead of trying to fix things on our own. When we put our faith in Jesus' hands, it is a huge leap of faith. It is like, you know, we can't feel, touch, taste. Like It's a, it's a faith deal, right? And it's a huge leap of faith. There's a great story. Do I have a picture of the house? I can't remember if I have a house on fire. Okay, this is not anyone's house that I know of. Um, but you can imagine for the sake of the story that the, a house is on fire. There's a single dad and an eight-year-old boy and the house is on fire and they can't see each other. And the son, somehow in this house, gets up to the roof. And he's able to escape some flames, but the house is burning quickly. The father makes his way outside, sees the son, comes underneath him and says, Son, jump, I'll catch you. But all the son can feel is the, is the heat from the fire, see the flames and the smoke. And he says, Daddy, 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 I can't see you. I can't see you. The father looks up and says, You don't have to see me. I see you. Now jump. And that's how it is with our faith life. God sees you. He sees your struggle. He knows where you're at right now, your financial worry, your stress, your anxiety, your fears. He knows all those. He knows your heart of hearts. He knows what you stay, stay up at night worrying about and thinking about. He knows all those things. You feel like the fire is just coming all around you. And God says, jump. Trust in me. Follow my commandments. Follow my way. And I will give you a better life. I will save you, literally, from the fire. You can go to the next one. The second point to ponder is this, that faith 
True faith believes Jesus can do anything. Not just say that he can do anything. We believe that he can do anything. Well, not this, because this problem is really bad. Yes, anything. Jesus follows these Jewish guys, these leaders, that the, to the centurion's home to respond to that request. We pick it up in verse 7. The centurion says, I'm not even worthy to come and meet you. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. I know this. This is the centurion talking, the Roman officer talking. He says, I know this because I am under the authority of my superior officers, and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say, go, and they go. If I say, come, they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. This is verse 9. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to the crowd that was following him, he said, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. And when the officer's friends returned to his house, they found the slave completely healed. So Jesus wasn't even in the vicinity, even the eye shot, couldn't even see the servant, just healed him. And the centurion says, hey, I'm not worthy. You don't have to even come to my house. I, I know what it's like to be in charge of people and to be in, 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 in uh, authority under someone else. When someone says go, I go. When I tell my soldiers to go, they go. You say the word and it will be done. How's your faith? How's your faith? Or do you really believe that, that God, that Jesus can do anything? Or are you trying to fix all the problems by yourself? Can you believe that Jesus will do and trust that he will do anything? The centurion believed Jesus will heal his servant by just speaking the word. And he understands authority. The centurion has faith in the authority of Jesus to simply command sickness to leave and it will. Or the servant to rise up and he would. True faith has confidence that Jesus can do anything. And there is nothing outside the scope of his power. Do you live like that? I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, judging you. I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. If the Holy Spirit is convicting you, then that's on you. But are you living your life in such a way that your life is reflective of your belief that Jesus can do anything? If we have faith that Jesus can do anything, it, it, cha it changes our approach to everything. We don't have to be stressed out about this and that and this because Jesus can take care of it. Jesus can give us victory over it. Any addiction. We, don't have to, we can give it to Jesus. Is there work that has to be done? 100%. But it starts at laying that at the foot of the cross. Amen? Anything that you're struggling with, it starts with giving it to Jesus first. We go straight to Jesus and ask Him to speak a word of light into us. If you believe Jesus can do anything like the centurion, it will change your life. Because Jesus has the authority to make a difference. Jesus has the authority to make a difference. Living a life of faith means that we trust the author and the perfecter of our faith. He created us and he set life into motion despite the wind and the worries and the flames and the smoke of life. We trust that we can rest securely in him. When Jesus hears the confidence of this centurion soldier, he is amazed. Wouldn't it be cool to amaze Jesus? I mean, that would be, that would be pretty cool. Like, the guy walked on water, turned water into wine, like that amazed him. Like, whoa, that's pretty cool. Which means, as humans, we don't have a lot of faith. We are, we are born with not a lot of faith. We want to fix things on our own. And then the enemy of, the, of, the, of us, the devil, whispers to us, that's, that's impossible. You can't get away from that. You have been identified with that for so long. This Your sin, your sin pattern, your whatever, that's just who you are. Don't give that to Jesus. That you're, that, that's just you. Don't listen to that junk. Don't listen to that. Put your faith in Jesus. If you say the words and you believe it, then you've got to act like it. Actually trust God. Point to ponder number three. True faith joins God in serving the world. Because that's what God wants us to do. You can't have everything that God has promised and then not do anything that God says for you to do. You can't play both. If God told us to go and make disciples and you're not going to make any disciples but you're going to God and say, hey, help me with this, help me with this, help me with that, help me with this, give me this. But it's not, you can't, you're playing both sides of the fence. You can't do that. You jump in, right? You're adopted. You're not part of the family. 
And we do what God tells us to do. But we don't like authority here in America, right? We don't we we rail against it. We want autonomy. We want to do our own thing. Every every ad that you see, I'm a voice actor. Every ad that I do out, like it's about getting the thing that's gonna help you have a better life. So you can get ahead, so you can do this, and you can do that. It's about how you can be comfortable, how we can retire and live a good life and live on some island somewhere, and you know, and that's the that's the American dream. That's not the kingdom of heaven. That's not what God wants for us. God wants us to make disciples and to serve the world. True faith is not just believing that Jesus can do something in our lives. It's also believing that Jesus can do something through our lives. Not just doing something for us, but through us. The book of James. Do we have that scripture? Good. Um, James 2 says this. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds, but doesn't do anything about it? Can such a faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister, and I'll give you an example. Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what we would do in our church world is, we'll pray for you. We'll pray for you. Oh, I, oh, oh. That's, bless your heart. We'll pray for you. And then we do nothing about it. Okay? What good is it? In the same way, faith by itself is, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. We have to get up. Today's volunteer, volunteer, we're calling it volunteer until we can think of a better name. Uh, volunteer Appreciation Day, which means you're actually serving, which is amazing. If you're not, like Pastor John said, let's get in there and let's, let's start serving. Um, and this is just one way, right? Because that's inside the walls of the church. But we also have to serve outside of the walls of the church because how will people that don't know Jesus know Jesus unless we go and show them the love of Jesus, right? Amen. Um, and that's here in Greenfield, and that's all the way to Eswatini, Africa, like it, all around the world. We're actually going to be ambassadors of Christ and actually do what God told us to do. Faith without deeds is dead. The author, J James, says, it begins by asking a very important question. What good is it to have faith without doing any kind of service, without any kind of action or works accompanying it? The example that is given is seeing a need around us and doing nothing to help meet that need. James would consider it to be a worthless, a dead faith. Practical example. Um, I don't know if anybody ever had a headache. Never in your life ever had a headache. Yeah, I was like, I got one right now. Stop talking. Um, and uh, so we get a headache. Brooke and I, uh, we have a thing in our house. If we get a headache or you know, my knee was sore yesterday, uh, we, we have a code that we say, did you take anything? Which means, I love you, but shut up. <laughs> Pretty much. Like, if you, have you taken any pills yet? Have you had a Tylenol or an Advil? If you haven't, stop talking to me. Um, until you do. Now, you know, I, 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 was a, I was a baby. I was a third born. Um, I was a little, you know, my mom took care of me. I still, if I'm sick, I still call my mom. Uh, it was not feeling good. Uh, Brooke's like, get better, because we got kids to raise, and you got a church to run, and I got things to do. Let's go. It's a headache. Come on. Uh, you know, and that's when I had COVID. No, I just kidding. Uh, but pretty much, right? And uh, we, we have, a, you know, we have, she calls them red pills, and it's not drugs, it's just Advil, ibuprofen, generic, we, she doesn't know the name. We call them, she goes, did you take a red pill? No, I just want some support, you know, I just want to be, she goes, get up and take it here, she'll give it to me, and uh, there it is. You can believe that, Ad, well, she's Advil, um, you can believe that Advil works. You can follow the directions, take two Advil every six hours, um, relieves headaches, inflammation, blah, blah, blah. You can have a belief in it, you can even own a bottle of Advil. But until you, that's like pro-drugs, um, but until you take the drugs, until you take the pills, you're not really believing that Advil is going to take your headache away. Does that make sense? You're just having a bottle of Advil, and it looks great on the show. We got, like, we went, like, Sam's Club. You know, we got one of those, that, you know, like, um, you know, it's a big bottle of Advil. And, that, uh, and we see it, and like, but it doesn't mean, doesn't do us any good if it just sits on the shelf. And so many churches have so many people, well-intentioned people, that just come in and they sit and they get fed. I just want to get fed. I've heard that so many times. Now, I want to get fed. Don't give me some meat. I want some deep spiritual... And they get fed and they get fed until they get spiritual diabetes. They just get fed and fed and fed. Why? Because there's no action. 
There's no movement. You have to get up and get, yes, you get fed, you come, you gather, and then you scatter. You go out into the world, to your job, to your family, to the world around you, and serve. Put your faith in action. Now, I know many of you are doing that. I'm preaching to the choir. But there are people that are not yet. Maybe they're watching online. And I can talk to myself sometimes because, man, you can't. If you're tired and you're sore and you've been doing this, you're like, oh, i gotta get up. I got to get up and go serve people. Yeah, even when we don't feel like it. We have to put our faith where our mouth is. We have to move our hands and our feet to actually do action. We have to believe more than the, the, the Advil bottle uh, says it's going to take headaches. We have to actually take the medicine before a headache will go away. The world around us is in need of people full of faith. People like that centurion who believe that Jesus, all he needs to do is speak a word and it will be done. But the world also needs people of faith to show the faith that they have in God, the love of God, to lead them, to reach out to them because their life is on fire. I mean, just watch the news for five minutes, watch social media, scroll through it a little bit, and everyone, you know, anxiety is up, depression is up, all these things, all these awful things, mass killings, all the things, the bad things that happen in the world. It's, the people are, it, they're, it's just constantly around them. Our next series is about water and Jesus and Peter walking on water, all these storms of life. We're going to kind of get into that and how we navigate those things. But just know that your friends and your neighbors and your family members are suffering. You're suffering. In your heart of hearts, you know the things that you're struggling with. The world needs us to be the love and light of Christ. We are made new, not for our own benefit. It's not just about you. It's not just about me. It's about helping the broken people around us. Our faith plays out in our generosity and our giving. It plays out in our serving. When we decide, like, all right, I'm going to get up and go to church because, you know, I, they need me to serve. <laughs> that means i got to get up. Um, I could go to the Church of the Holy Comforter and watch online, or I actually can get up and come serve. And we need you. We need you. I'm going to, the volunteer appreciation, I'm going to talk about that 20-80 rule um, where 20% of the people do 80% of the work. And that is super important. I'm not going to spoil that. Stick around. It's going to be a fun little mini message that we talk about that. But we need you. Um, I need you to say, yes, I'm making, this is the church. Um, this is my local church. This is the bus that I'm on. And we need you to step in and help serve because the more people that serve is the more people we can reach. The more people we can reach not to grow city church, but to advance the kingdom of God. It's our turn. If you accepted Christ, it's your turn. It's, it's like you're walking and one foot is saying, I accepted Christ, I am saved, I'm a Christian. The other foot is, I'm going to act like it. I'm going to serve. I'm going to help people. And James says, you can't just kind of, okay, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, because he looks weird, right? It's left, right, left, right. It's believing and serving. Believing and serving. And when you serve, your belief, your faith grows. And when your faith grows, guess what grows? Your service grows. When your service grows, your belief grows. And all of a sudden, whoa, I'm actually a healthy person. I have a healthy family. I have a healthy church. My friends are coming to know Jesus. My coworkers are coming to Christ and go, oh my goodness, God is blessing because I'm following His command for my life. Does that make sense? It's a left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. So much that we can't distinguish one from another. So this week, when I close, I'm going to have the band come back up and close this out. We've got to keep our eyes open for opportunities to serve people around us. Not looking backwards, but looking forwards. Believing that we are members of God's family, adopted by our Heavenly Father. And that we are made new, not for just ourselves, but for the world around us. It starts right here. We said it last week. You don't have to go save your entire block. We're going to ask you to get a, bit, you get a, a milk crate and a megaphone. Go, you're all going to hell. That's not what we're asking you to do. We're asking you to make a relationship with one person. In your, in your work. In your family. Maybe it's one of your children. Pour into them. Show them the love of Jesus. Open up the word of God together. The scripture says, taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord has made you new. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you have been made new. Now what he's telling you to do is to go live like it. Act like it. Tell your face. Tell someone else. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today, God. And I pray that you would use the words that 
are coming from your scripture that came out of my mouth, God, that everyone in this room, myself included, and those watching online, would be transformed from the inside out. That we would take it the next step in faith to serve, to live, and to obey your commands, to be under your authority, knowing that you can you can you can heal our bodies and our souls and our minds and make everything new. Help us not to hold on to that and be selfish. Help us to go tell other people about that. And to show them your love by our actions. We pray this all in your name. Amen. What we're going to do is we're going to stand up. And one thing that, uh, this is kind of a cool thing, when you have a pitcher, whatever it's made out of, it always starts by taking some kind of metal or plastic, melting it then molding it into the shape that you want so that it can be filled and then used. And in a similar way, we, were, we are called to do the harm, to be melted, molded, filled, so we can then be used. And so, as a response to the message we have heard, we're just going to ask the Spirit of the living God to fall afresh on us. Lord, we've heard your message. We want to have that in us. And in that case, we need to be melted. We need to be molded, shaped in a way that we can be filled, and that we can be used by you. So let's sing this song together. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. It's okay. Spirit Sunday and we'll see you next week. Go in peace.